Joining us now to discuss is Republican Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania. He is a lead negotiator in these bipartisan talks. Senator, thanks for joining us. Obviously, you're in the middle of these negotiations. Are you confident there's going to be a deal? Can you give us any idea of what kind of measures you're discussing? Yeah, Jake, uh, there's, uh, there's not that much, really, that I can tell you at this point, except to say that we, we are making progress. You have uh, men and women from both sides of the aisle who are negotiating in good faith. Uh, there are a number of items that are on the table. Um, I, I, I think the odds modestly favor us getting something done, and actually, this is the first time in 10 years I've felt that way. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Republican senators who are inside the room during your party lunch today say that some of your colleagues feel that the current deal might go too far. They're predicting at least half of the Republican conference would vote against it. That's still theoretically uh, 75 votes to pass it. Um, what do you say to those critics? Uh, are you confident you can get enough Republican votes to pass at least 10? Uh, uh, Jake, I would say it's way too soon to be uh, trying to speculate about vote counts. I mean, we haven't nailed down what's going to be in and what's not going to be in, and the actual language of the ideas that are going to be in, the language matters enormously. So I um, certainly my hope would be a majority of Republicans would be able to support this. Um, that, that would be very much uh, where I hope we would end up, but I think it's too soon to know. Senator Rick Scott, when he was Governor Rick Scott of Florida, signed into law pretty sweeping measures after the Parkland massacre in 2018, which included red flag laws, which I understand some of your colleagues are publicly voicing uh, concern about in terms of their not providing uh, due process and the like. But our correspondent Leila Santiago took a look at the red flag laws and how they're working in Florida. Even very conservative sheriffs down there say that they're, they're working really well. Is Rick Scott at all talking about how that reform that he signed into law is working? I haven't had that conversation with Senator Scott, so I, I don't know uh, exactly what his view is of the implementation. I can tell you this. I think it's unlikely that there would be a national red flag law per se, but what might find its way into this package, what is uh, under consideration, is providing some federal incentives and resources to encourage states to enact their own red flag laws, provided that they provide some due process, because after all, we are talking about depriving a person of a constitutional right prior to them having actually done something wrong. So you got to be careful about how you do that. Uh, but that said, uh, I do think there are cases where red flag laws can work, and uh, that's, that's part of the discussion. A source tells CNN that Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has privately expressed an openness for raising the age from 18 to 21 for the ability to purchase semi-automatic rifles. He has not said that publicly. It doesn't seem as though that is part of your final deal. Um, it wasn't when I talked to Chris Murphy, with whom you've been dealing, the Democrat, on Sunday. He did not mention it. Uh, it does seem a lot of Republicans oppose it. H have you heard from other Republicans who might support stronger measures in private but won't do so publicly for whatever reason? No, I, I, no, I've not had that conversation with any of my colleagues, uh, not with Senator McConnell, not with others. Um, uh, look, I, I, I think that, that it is worth seriously considering providing some extra scrutiny for young uh, purchasers. Um, but, but prohibitions are, are that's, that would be very tough. So possibly a waiting period for somebody 18 to 21, possibly time to go through and make sure that there isn't a, you know, a juvenile record that's blinking red? Well, I, I don't want to get too deep into the specifics, Jake, because this, these are moving targets and ongoing discussions, but, but uh, a heightened la level of scrutiny um, might make sense considering that um, so many of these massacres are committed by young adults, um, guys in their late teens or early 20s who have a history of mental health issues. So it sort of stands to reason that you'd like to have a better way to understand that before someone walks away with a firearm. You've been very active for years now, especially after um, the Sandy Hook massacre, working with uh, another fellow NRA-endorsed Senator Joe Manchin, trying right. to expand background checks right. to include um, those private sales at, at gun shows. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, Non the ones that aren't sales. yeah the, the ones exactly that aren't done by gun stores but are rather just person right. to person. Um, 
that's not going to be in this final package. Why not? Why are why are your Republican colleagues balking on that? So so let me let's be be careful. So the Mansion Toomey approach was not intended to capture a private transaction between myself and my next door neighbor, for instance. But what we were trying to capture, and what I still think we should capture, are what we consider commercial sales. And I think at gun shows, you have a level of activity that really constitutes commercial sales. I think when transactions are advertised, and especially advertised over the internet, that, that amounts to a commercial activity. I'd like to see background checks on all commercial sales. Um, I don't think the Mansion Toomey version of that is going to be in a final package here, but I would suggest there are many ways that you could accomplish that goal of ensuring that you capture a lot more transactions and have that background check occur. So let's wait and see what, what finally emerges. Um, I am hoping that we will expand background checks in a meaningful way. The emotional testimony we heard today before the House Oversight Committee from victims of gun violence, does that have any impact on your fellow Republican senators? I don't know, Jake. Um, honestly, you know, uh, most senators have schedules that is completely booked nonstop all day long, and very few of us, as my guests, have had time to watch a House hearing. But I understand that it was so emotionally powerful. My guess is it'll be replayed many times on many shows, and so over time people will see it. Um, uh, it's very hard to say what impact that'll have. Best of luck with your negotiations, sir. Republican Senator Pat Toomey from the Great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Always appreciate your time.